would to talk to you about a project I created. It's called Character Creator. So basically, uh, it's not free. Well, it is free software, but the idea is to provide some free assets for free software. So just a bit of history. It started in 2014. Actually, the online version started in 2014. I actually had the idea for it around uh, 2007. And uh, today, we, it, it's slowly gaining traction, and we've got about 100,000 users uh, every month. Uh, this is what I use it for. So I basically built it for myself, scratching my own itch to make comics. Here's a sample. I've got some, a few sample pages of what I use it for. Some illustrations uh, used with uh, the application. So basically, it's to. I use it to make comics, but I think it's going to mostly be used for people, uh, indie game developers, who are trying to get a game off the ground but are having a hard time finding assets. So that's the main threshold. So there's a lot of. There's a lot of art online you can find, but the big problem is finding art that's unified, that fits together, that doesn't look uh, disjointed when you bring it together in the same project. And also there's the fact that if you are looking for an artist to have a uniform style, well, artists can sometimes be expensive uh, or unre unreliable. I know I am. I'm way too costly, and uh, I lose interest in projects sometimes, so uh, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a problem I see uh, a lot of people having. So we re reuse code, so why don't we reuse art? And with SVG, the beauty of it is that the art is now also code. Uh, the goals of my project was uh, twofold, mainly. Uh, I wanted to have a user interface that was very simple, so a child could pick it up. Uh, even someone who, doesn't, who can't read could uh, go into the application and figure it out. So the application interface uh, was sort of a game at the same time. So it looks kind of those like uh, Barbie doll, paper doll games where you can build a character with a few options. <coughs> but at the same time of having a simple UI, I wanted the quality of the art that is provided uh, to be good enough so people can use it in games. And uh, even if they wanted to uh, sell the games later on, uh, it would be good enough to uh, meet a certain uh, standard of quality. Arbitrary, of course, but uh, I use my own judgment for that. And I want it to be free for everyone to use, uh, even for commercial use. So, yeah, uh, just having characters is not enough. That's why I chose this VG, because you can draw characters by hand and have PNGs and stack them up, but then you have a difficulty with raster images when you want to scale them up and down. And uh, it, it can get really problematic really quick. So that's why uh, I thought SVG was the perfect solution for that because it's a free license, it's integrated in HTML5. So basically that means you can have access to every device that can run the web, which is a whole lot of devices. And on top of that, SVG is easy to edit, convert, and export even outside the web. So you can download it have it in your application and put it into your program. You can put it into all sorts of uh, final products, basically. And modifying SVG is really fun. Uh, it's code, so you can, you can even have it in Git, which you can't do with raster files. Uh, you can scale your images, so you can have your foreground characters and background characters reused. And uh, if the shapes provided in the character creator are not to uh, your liking, you can modify them pretty easily uh, using known tools. Now, when I started, uh, I had no idea what it, I, I, I thought it was going to be, uh, I thought it was going to, I saw a lot of potential in SVG when I learned about it. But still, I didn't know how it worked, how to use it. So I started to draw, 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 learn Inkscape, and just started to accumulate a lot of assets. I had a general idea of what I wanted to do, but I had to get there first. So I had to figure out how the whole thing worked. Now, the first version was just the, basically a Python script. So I would have a few options that you could choose from in command line with no UI. And uh, that was a problematic because trying to figure out what you want your character to look like with just a few text options 
it's not the best. And uh, obviously, like hardly anyone was going to download it and use it. So that was the first wall I hit. So it's hard to create visual style of UI. Wouldn't get people's attention. And, but at least I knew that it worked. I knew that I could have a few options and get a final result. Now that's when I decided to switch. I couldn't figure out how to get a, a UI to work in Python. And I also thought that just downloading the application was going to be an extra step that some people wouldn't be willing to take. So I figured that by having it as a web application, people would load up the web page and would have the application running right then and there. So they'd already be uh, using it as soon as it was loaded. So yeah, it works on all platforms and also allows me to get a little bit of feedback through statistics on uh, what people are using, what they're not using. So it gives me some type of feedback to improve the application. Now, SVG has a lot of advantages, but in the context of my character creator, is I can divide every element of clothing, of body shapes, everything can be divided into layers, reused, and SVG is very easy to inject into the DOM and also to remove. So uh, what you see on screen is always lightweight. I never have any images in the, uh, in the web page that you're not using, or just the menu you're using to select is injected at one time. So it stays lightweight, and when it's time to download, uh, it's very simple. I just basically uh, give you a download of what's in the DOM. So yeah, a few things to consider is I had to use uh, JavaScript to manage the SVG. At the time, I did not know JavaScript at all. Uh, so, but uh, I'm very persistent and headstrong, so I figured, all right, well, let's just learn. So I, I wrote everything, and I had some help with some friend, from some friends to try to figure it out. So the code was very, very ugly in the beginning. Some parts are still very ugly, but I think I've made some progress in some areas. So the gist of it is having CSS classes on the different elements that allow me to select the items to change colors and to be able to edit it. So that's basically just uh, what I use to, to select the items when you want to change color. Very simple. Here's an example of a menu that I use. So basically, I just think of different sections and add the possibilities that are there. And uh, that's the complete uh, options of each uh, template character. So I have a male and female template at the moment. And I have everything listed uh, in there in order of, um, uh, of z-index, if you will. So everything that's in the back would be at the top and everything that will be shown at the front will be at the bottom in the, uh, in the file. All right, so I had to figure out how I was gonna do this. So I decided I was gonna have uh, some simple class names. So I have the skin class, which works for, well, obviously, the skin. And uh, everything else will be, uh, I'll use Greek letters, like alpha, beta, everything like that. And so that's the, how I separate the different colors on each layer, basically. Now, to have uh, varying degrees of light and dark, I added some suffixes, like uh, dark, darker, darkest, and light, lighter, lightest, which gives me a range of seven colors, which for me was enough to get the level of quality that, that I was looking for. Also, some, lay some uh, 2D layers are in front, partly in front of the character, and others partly in the back. So I had to separate some of the layers into parts like this. So I have one of two and two of two, etc., cetera, uh, as suffixes into the IDs. Now, when I started, I had to make some decisions of arbitrary defaults that were not necessarily educated guesses, we were just basically I needed something to start with, so I have a random view box of uh, which is a pretty ugly, if I was going to start over and start with something more standard like 0, 0, 1,000, 1,000, which uh, gives you a, a better understanding. But these were the cho choices I made in the beginning, and that's what I'm stuck with uh, without totally redoing all the images. Same with the class names. I made some choices, and uh, actually the class names work, work out pretty well for my needs. And um, also one of the arbitrary default was the position of the characters. 
Now, the male, male character is pretty uh, basic, but the female character has one leg up and uh, a little arm like this. So if I was to redo it, I'd probably choose something a little bit more uh, front-facing too. But I made some decisions at the beginning, and now I'm stuck with them. <laughs> this is what the positions are. So hopefully I'll be able to add uh, new positions in the future, and uh, you'll have more choices than this. So some things were pretty straightforward, like I mentioned, but other things like getting uh, emotions and expressions uh, to change that on the character is pretty complicated. Uh, just the eyes uh, are always the same, so I don't have different eyes. I always have the same eyes, but all the eye shapes, the exterior eye shapes, are masks. So that I eventually can animate the eyes in the, in the application, and you can also change the eye positions, which is not implemented yet but uh, half of the work is done, so it's coming. And uh, same thing with body shapes. If I start adding new body shapes, I have to draw all the different clothings on those body shapes too, so that's gonna take time. I'm waiting for the right moment to start uh, digging into that part of the, of the application. Now, uh, one of the features that I uh, found interesting is that you can, um, you can actually it's the random feature. I think I'll give you a quick demo of this. So if I start the character creator, right, there we go, choose skin color, body type, and uh, I just can click on a part here, and I, I added a little random function that if you have no idea what kind of character you want to build, you can <laughs> click on random and it just basically <laughs> go through all the elements. <laughs> Now, um, this sparks a lot of ideas in my head. And, uh, I'm hope I want to hopefully, uh, eventually, I, I hope to add different options for the random so you can control the random a little bit better. So this, uh, if you have no clue where you want to go, could possibly be an alternative way to think up and dream up new characters. Obviously, once you have the cake, it hides, <laughs> hides everything else. <coughs> There you go. So if you want to see more, well, you can you can play with it. All right. Pause. Can I pause here? Yeah, the pause button sometimes has a problem. It's still buggy. What are you going to do? I know, I'll fix it. All right. So the random feature. Uh, I also have a, a hashing system in the URL. So basically, each time you add an option, it's added in the hash of the website, so after the URL. Now, this goes for the items you choose, the colors also are included in the hash, so that gives you some nifty features. So if I make a character and I'm like, oh, this is really cool, I wanna show it to my friend, I can copy the URL, give it to my friend over any messaging service, email, whatever, and once they enter the URL, they'll give them exactly the same character that I created. So that's a nifty way of uh, sharing your characters pretty quickly without any sign up, without any accessing, uh, with zero clicks, basically. It also allows for some Easter eggs, because some people ask me to have uh, all the female hairstyles on the male, so I did, but I found that if I put those in the menu, it would kind of complicate things a little bit. I wanted to keep it simple, but since they're there, you can access it through the hash, so I can put a female hairstyle, well, no, female, obviously, relative term, but I can put these things in the hash and it'll pop up even though it's not in the menu. So you got some Easter eggs and you can hack a little bit of the hash URL. And it's an alternative way to save your characters also. Uh, now I've got a login feature and you can actually have a bunch of characters you want to save, but in the beginning all I had was the hash and you could actually copy the URL into a text file and come back to the website anytime and uh, get the character you created just by entering the URL. So exporting is super easy. Uh, it's an SVG. Although I get a lot of demand for raster images because in the general public, not everyone knows vector art, how it works, and uh, how to uh, deal with it. So I'm thinking of adding a little bit of uh, documentation or in, uh, you know, uh, information on how to open SVGs, but I'm. I still get uh, demand for raster images. I don't really want to do the work because it doesn't interest me, but uh, if someone else wants to, or eventually if I get tired of being asked, I'll, I'll get it done. So, 
Inkscape, obviously, is the reason this project exists. I discovered vector art, uh, well, I'm not sure why, uh, several years before with Adobe, but uh, once I moved to free software and discovered Inkscape, that's when I realized that uh, my comic book process could uh, involve vector graphics because I was moving around a lot and uh, carrying a big drawing table was problematic and uh, it's very hard to reuse drawings when they're all you know, sketches and scans. It's uh, problematic. So the fact that Escape exists and SVGs, uh, I think, is, uh, allows for new ways to, to design comics. So adding new items is still a bit hard and problematic. I'm the only one who adds items for the moment. I got an email asking how to do it, so I think I'm gonna sit down and write a how to do this. But you need to get into the code still. I'm, hope, I'm looking forward to the, the day when the code will be able to just take the file names and inject them and do the behind the scenes things automatically so that artists won't have to open up an intimidating uh, code base. So basically, you, you, you can download a character template, so you just choose a character, you don't put any items on it, and uh, uh, you just draw the item, and then you go to the code, you add the classes on the items on the different colors, and uh, then you inject it. That's how you add one. And uh, yeah, so I'm looking forward to, uh, right now you can only change one color per item, but I'm halfway done on that feature too, so that's coming where you can handle multiple colored items. Uh, the animations are coming, and uh, the mail template has now uh, sectioned arms that will eventually be able to be moved. Same with the eyes and um, mobility in the arms. I hope to add rotating heads eventually. And you know, one of the things that's not so easy is actually getting users to understand this VG, as I mentioned. So some of the cons, it takes a long time to create items right now. I hope to change that in the future. Different body types requires drawing all the items. And uh, yeah, what the future holds is different body types, positions, and um, hopefully separating the repo for the images so that other artists can take the code base and put their own style of character so you can have more than one character creator. You find one for each style that you want, hopefully. Uh, documentation, I'll never do documentation, I'm not kidding myself. So, and I, I want to add a service worker so it works offline when you don't have Wi-Fi. Here's what I'm doing in the background. This is not on the website, but this is for myself. So I can take the hash from the website, put it in my Python script, and it will change the color and the layers of the feature so I get my characters looking like it does on the website. It's not on the website, but it's just to give you a glimpse of what's coming. So if you want to reach me, uh, this is how you do it. And that's it, thank you.